phone calls are popping up from like our management going, hey, so-and-so's a ghost management call. Pull the picture down. Oh, it was too late. Too late. It was yeah. just too late. It just, it just went viral. Good night, nice you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the band Calibri's coming at you. I am Bobby. That's Jimmy. And that's Davey. This is the Mystic Cult of Horrors podcast, episode 23. And tonight we have Steve fucking Z. <laughs> Don't what? bring him in yet. Oh. Morning Noise, The Undead, Sam Hain, Black 29, Doom Tree, Son of Sam, and Jensen. There he is. That's all I got oh, for you Steve, guys. Baby. That's it. <laughs> Steve. Steve. How are you guys Thank doing? You for coming on. Good. Oh, baby. Thanks for having oh. me. Yeah. Thank What's going on? Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Oh man. First off, I just want to say, sir, you are a national treasure. Thank you. <laughs> Living so legend. Much. Yeah. Thank you so much for being a part of. So, what? You, so influential on the scene. Um, oh yeah. You guys aren't. You know, all the bands you've been in, it's not like, you know, everyone knows you in the world, but the people who do know you, we appreciate you so much and for what you bring to uh, the musical landscape and influence so many people and uh, us especially. So. Could you sign my tits? <laughs> <laughs> Steve! <laughs> oh, we'll sign yours too. All right. Sign my shirt? <laughs> well, thank you guys. I, I appreciate, um, you know, uh, everything you're saying. Uh, you know, I, I, it's... Uh, I've had a great, you know, it's been a great time, you know, and <laughs> we keep making, you know, if you think about it, it's kind of like, um, sometimes you wonder how to get here. Right. Um, and, uh, I guess I've been, you know, blessed, fortunate to be in the circumstances as I've, uh, you know, as the years go by. Right. So it's like, never say never. Right. Yeah. And, um, uh, I don't know. I'm just looking for some more great things to come. Yeah. You know, how you guys doing? Yeah. Good, oh, good, good. How you doing? Oh, before, hey, oh, hey, doing? Uh, hey, doing good. Hey, doing? so doing? before, <laughs> before we get into the madness, okay, Steve, could you home. give us <laughs> and the viewers at home and the viewers at home if, that don't know who the fuck you are? Yeah, who the fuck? No, everybody knows hey. who this fucking guy is. <laughs> Steve um, could you <laughs> can you sell yourself? Yeah. Uh, who who are you? What do you do? Yeah. Uh, He's for all those schmucks out there. Why do we love you? Yeah. You know, I don't know if anybody, any one of us, know who we, you know, who exactly we are. Because <laughs> oh. you know, I don't even know who I am. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm a person that loves. I, I love music, right? Uh, I love all kinds of music, right? So I I think by you know music is an influence to me since i was a kid and i did everything that i could do to make sure that i was involved in it right as far as like meeting glenn and things like that i put myself in those situations um to be able to um i guess graduate from each level right uh even you know back with the undead and stuff you know uh, bobby Steele was a you know, kind of like a, a little bit of an influence when I was much younger, not now, but, um, um, <laughs> he still owes me money. So I don't, you know. hey, hey, God. Hey. Bobby, what the hey. hell? Hey. Yo, we you got Steve Z. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make a call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll Only got to make one call. Um, yeah. So, so who am I? I'm, I'm just a guy who, you know, uh, I like to write music. I like to play music, obviously. I love to record music. I'm I'm coming to you in my studio here in New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, and I'm in the midst of mixing uh, this uh, guitar player from Staten Island who's been uh, here since last July doing his solo album. So I've actually, right before I got on the call, we've been working on a mix. Yeah. And uh, we got a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of tracks from him. And it's, it's you know, really, it's good old fashioned rock and roll music. And, you know, n no uh, gimmicky tracks or anything like that coming in. It's just no face makeup and all that bullshit. Some good <laughs> no. old fashioned, the way God wanted, intended it to be. Rock That's and roll. right. <laughs> Nude. <laughs> Nude and rude. What's the it's name so. of your studio? Do you have a name for the studio? I, I can't yeah, see it it's, it's called trick or treat 
Oh, fuck oh, yeah. Hell okay. yeah. So yeah. It, can people, anyone contact you to record uh, yeah. their team? Oh, yeah. Just... Yeah, I've been, I've been, you know, I produce a bunch of other people too, local bands. So um, it's not invite only? People can like hit you up and... Yeah, I, I mean, here's, here's, here's the thing, right? Um, I'm kind of choosy because I just don't want to, it's in my home and I don't want to just open my home to anyone. So, you know, got to make sure you're cool. And not <laughs> stupid. Yeah. First of all, it's awesome to see you know the other side, the family man uh, of Mr. Steve, and then I mean, we love that you post all the behind the scenes stuff like on tour. Because by doing that, thank you for doing that. Because it lets us go around for the ride. If you're not doing it, no one's doing it. Yeah, no one's. If you're not doing it, so it's so cool to be behind the scenes with you. And it's just like I feel like We're you're. Friends. We're best yeah, friends. I feel like I know you more than anyone else because <laughs> I'm seeing that I'm seeing your family. Well, thank you. I, you know, I get kicked out of doing that because, again, you know, to me, I mean, besides getting on a stage and playing in front of thousands of people, which is, you know, the best fucking job you could ask for. The, the other part of the job is meeting people like you. Like, I know I've met you guys in, at the Marquee, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember. Um, he remembers. And, he remembers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I do. I do. Thank God. You know, and uh, yeah, I know you guys have played uh, and, and played shows together with Zombies and stuff and yeah. Mario and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, the other part, the best part of the other thing is, like, like I said, meeting people. You know, because those are the people that um, are, are supportive, not only in a show or buying a, a record or whatever, but, you know, you you can't, it's very easy to get up on a stage and play, but if you're not, if you can't feel the energy with people and it, it sucks, right? It's like you go to Europe, you play these big festivals and it's a, it's a blessing, but it's kind of hard. You got to work so hard because you're playing to the unknowns, right? And you might've met a bunch of people along the way, but you know, it's always good to see people that you've met before. And it, and it does feel like this family thing where, oh, you know, there's David Calabrese, you know, <laughs> yeah, cool. You know, you yeah. play off the energy and stuff like that. So I, I, I love that. I think that's, that's a big part of, of my, um, uh, I don't want to say not success, but that that's part of the thing that I get off on. So it's would you just, say you and en you enjoy the smaller club shows then is it different energy than the huge? Well, it's a, it's a way it's different like energy. Gap? Yeah. I look, I'm not going to complain about the big shows because they're, <laughs> they're amazing. Big shows suck. No, <laughs> no. But when you're face to face, it's a little different. <laughs> big shows. Rule. Yeah. When you're face you to know, face with people breathing on you compared to like that big gap of security and all that. I and, like, can get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did, uh, 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 we were in Europe, uh, I guess it was about five, six years ago. It was a Danzig Doyle thing. And um, we sold out this uh, place called the Roundhouse in London, which is famous for having Z Led Zeppelin, who I don't like, uh, The Who. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, but I, I'm just saying, as far as, uh, you know, and the Ramones, but as far as an iconic place, 6,000 seater, we sold it out. But well, we had a few nights off in the UK, so we played this place called the Garage. It held, I don't know, three or four hundred people. We put it on sale for six pounds sixty six pence or whatever the hell they call it, and um, it sold out immediately. And it was a hot, sweaty nightclub, small stage, and we just went on there with no set list, and we just barreled through songs. And it was one of the most fun things you ever do, right? Because you know you're used to being in these. You know the larger places it's a blessing trust me and but you know when you get in in one of these little tight clubs and you can just you know you're basically passing people in the face with your music and <laughs> and it's more hey. you know it's more that one-on-one -on -one thing so you know yeah. i think there's i would love to be able to like you know do some big shows and then an unannounced show here or here you know somewhere hey. oh, yeah. Garth Brooks did that like right before the pandemic. He was doing these dive bars. Oh shit. Uh, oh, yeah, across man. the country. You know? Oh, that'd be amazing to see you at a little dive bar right before the, the big uh, arena show. Oh, yeah. All right. Here's <laughs> yeah. a fun idea. Okay. It's it's kind of like like now and now idea. Um 
whoever like runs like the Danzig stuff, you have everybody sign up to like a text messaging platform or whatever, like Danzig's number. <laughs> and you, you could filter out where people live and you send a text message to these people. You can also, oh, secret, uh, se secret concerts, secret yeah, merch. For them. Um, yeah. Like it's a, you should be, a, you, you should be in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, like there's, uh, it, it, it is a good idea, you know, um, you know, it, I, I agree with you. It's, it's, you know, when Fun. it comes down to shit like this, it's all logistics, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all getting from one place to the next, <laughs> to the next. And, you know, and you got to do it. You know, you guys have toured, you know, you got to get to one place and you're driving overnight to get to the next, you know, so it, it's, nuts. yeah. So, but it is a good idea. Thank I'll you. pass it along to the <laughs> boss. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> all right well, oh, wow. so also speaking of family, um, Jimmy's got a family. So I have he's, family. He's just like, so this is a personal question. So how do you balance family oh. and family work life? And, and yeah, work life of, of this, you know, hard rock and uh, rock band. How do you balance uh, that? How do you do it? All right. So when my older daughter graduated college, I mean, I'm sorry, high school, um, I, we were on tour in France. I couldn't be there. Right. So I watched it via FaceTime, thankfully. Uh, it was like two o'clock in the morning, France time or something, but it sucked. But this has been my life. I mean, I miss, you know, weddings, funerals, births, mm. you know, uh, it's, it, it's one of those uh, things that you have to, you know, there's a give and take, right. And, and, and it's not always a balance because the balance always winds up being like this somehow you gotta, Oh yeah. It ain't easy. It wasn't easy on my my um, first wife, you know, and she decided that she did not want any. She wanted somebody who was going to be home all the time and didn't do things. I mean, I do a lot of things. I own a, a small sound company, so I'm busy with that when I'm not yeah. doing things. Yeah, okay. so I, I got to keep busy. I'm not one that can, you know, I'm not a Back person who I don't like to lay on the couch and watch TV like my <laughs> wife does and. You know, uh, so reality TV. <laughs> uh, so it's really about. So it's really the balance is really not about balance. It's about just finding the right partner, um, yeah. and, well, and the, the agreements to be like, okay, this is how we're gonna. Right. This is my and, life. I'm a savage, and I'm gonna be <laughs> conquering the world. Are you cool? Are you cool with that? <laughs> Look, I met my 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 wife, um, um, my second wife, uh, at a Danzig after show party. So she knew exactly what she, you know, even the first one knew what she was getting into, but it's, it's, it's not an easy thing, right? It's, it re requires a lot of trust, right? Cause you cannot go on the road thinking that, you know, your partner you think is going to be either screwing somebody while you're home or while, you know, or she's home and you're away. So there's, there's a trust factor. My kids understand you know what the deal is because i travel yeah, all the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not even that i mean i i've traveled my entire career um in some fashion or not i mean i go to la every month now you know so, i mean since the pandemic i just went a few uh, last week and i'll start growing monthly for meetings and things but um i've traveled forever and it's just I'm, I'm like I said, I can't be stagged. I can't be in one spot. Maybe it's my ADD Supreme plus <laughs> subscription I got going on in my head, but I'm not one that could just sit still. I just can't do it. It's not me, you know, and it's, um, you know, I like being busy, yeah. but you know what I there think is the is? balance. Yeah. What's that? I think you just love what you do. And you just keep. I, going. I That's do. How I feel too. You just keep going, going, going. I just well, chug coffee all night. <laughs> <laughs> I just got into coffee, but um, oh, hey, welcome. <laughs> Hello. A friend of mine bought me this Keurig machine. It's got got all these fancy buttons, and you can make iced coffee and all this stuff. So I'm like, all right. So I drink one cup a day. That's my right. thing. Black. It's gateway drug. You'll you'll, you'll be oh. drinking five, six soon enough. <laughs> Maybe. Black you drink it black, right? Drink it like uh, a black, black. Yes. Straight. All right. Yes. All right. Good. 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 Okay. No sugar. Woo. No milk. Woo. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> no, give me cream. <laughs> um, I was gonna say. Oh, right, uh, so many things. Yeah. Well, I'm, I want to bring this oh, up okay, to you. Okay. I think this is hilarious. All right. This has to do with you taking um, selfies and stuff all the time. 
I believe. Okay, so you know Ghost. You're aware of Ghost. Um, so there's an infamous first photo of the reveal of Tobias. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert: Tobias Forge um, with Nur- is that how you say it? Nurgle? Nurgle. Uh. The behemoth singer. And then there's the second one. <laughs> you and the Danza group, Sean, Phil, and freaking Tobias straight in the center, and everyone's hashtag. That was such a legendary <laughs> right. photo. All right. You're in the so, back. Ah, such a legendary so, photo. I saw it in real time. <laughs> so so let me tell you what that was my camera. That was my phone. Uh, of course. And we we took the picture, right? And it was actually Tommy Victor. Tommy goes, oh, send me that picture. So Tommy puts it on his Facebook. And before you know it, it blows up. So that we were in New Orleans that night. We were playing the night after Ghost. We went because uh, Phil and Selma was a huge Ghost fan. Knows every word to every song. Nice. Yeah. And oh he, so, we, we, you know, again, that's Phil's hometown. We were playing the next night because... Um, uh, uh, Phil's band was opening up for us and on that tour. So again, we went out to have a gr- great time and everything. And we went backstage afterwards and, you know, I don't think Tommy even thought about it. Right. So the next morning it's like phone calls are popping up from <laughs> like our management going, Hey, so-and-so's a ghost management call, pull the picture down. Oh, it was too shit. late. Too late. It was yeah. just too late. It just it just went viral, right? Because this here's this guy who's been trying to keep himself under wraps of like <laughs> who he was, and you know, and it was like the it was like Kiss back in the seventies, right? You know, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you you know, were were photographing themselves from from you know, it's like <laughs> I don't know. But that photo but was so I, legendary. I, Sean, uh, Glenn, you. Um, Phil, Phil. Yeah, Phil. <laughs> I love your face in the oh. back. Yeah, I mean, just like, yeah, oh. this is happening. <laughs> of course, that's that's made me think that was your camera because you're the only one like knowing it was like, yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, yeah, no, you know, and he he wasn't like um, he didn't say no to taking a picture, but oh yeah, he's, he's know, one I, of these legends. Like, what's I, what's I mean, <laughs> I I don't I don't think he actually thought that uh, the picture would get out, so. What are you gonna do? Hey, <laughs> it was gonna happen eventually. Yeah, yeah. And what better way yeah, from your better, camera? Yeah, camera. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm wow. actually trying. I'm trying to find the picture on my my computer. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I love it. I, That's I, so awesome. I thought I thought it was fun. Breaking yeah. news. Yeah, on blabbermouth on Rolling Stones everywhere. It's just fucking. <laughs> it yeah, it crazy. did it it did go pretty viral, and. <laughs> Well, again, what, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, uh, it, it's hard to to um, keep yourself hidden when you're in, when you're in a position like that. Oh, nowadays too. It, it, a it, and, Everyone's walking around with a camera. It's like the seventies <laughs> different when you're kissed, but now it's like fuck. Well, the, the interesting the interesting about that is we were playing. Um, this is before uh, that tour and that that photo. We were playing. Um, Hellfest in France, and Johnny Kelly and I, you know, will normally walk around part of the festival just to see what's going on, and you know, and we were walking like um, uh, in the artist area, and there's it's it's a very big area, and this guy comes up to us and he starts talking to us, and we had no it was Tobias, but we had no idea it was <laughs> Tobias, you know, and um, oh, that's the downside, yeah, it, the makeup. <laughs> Right. So it's like, you know, Johnny's like, I thought he was, I thought he was a guy who used to roadie for typo at one time. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that be a fucking thing? <laughs> right. But yeah, cause, uh, but what are you going to do, man? It's like, oh, well. All right. So, <laughs> so going to, sh- okay. You, you're wearing the Lodi uh, pizza shirt. Yeah. So you, I want to go back to the beginning. It just seems so crazy that you guys, just a b- bunch of, you know, a bunch of grease balls from New Jersey. Uh, we are great, great. Uh, okay, Eddie and the Cruisers. Have you seen Ed, it? Eddie and Cruisers. Where you stand on that movie? Love it. Where do I stand on it? Yeah, I love Eddie. <laughs> I, 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 I love Eddie and the Cruisers. You know, um, I, 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 I don't know for sure. Like if, um, um, like part two, 
that was a little confusing. I'm like, <laughs> it's got some good lines in there though too. But we love that movie. We 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 uh. And I'm Eddie. At the very end, he goes, "And I'm Eddie." <laughs> and the crowd cheers out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did. Oh, yeah, oh man, I know. But anyway, so so Lodi, Lodi. it's like uh, like you guys put that. It like no one would even talk about Lodi unless it's for you guys. It's just kind of like, <laughs> yeah. what the hell is this? It's like a yeah, like the cradle civilization. Film. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Where when man did, was born. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a our Plymouth Jerusalem. Rock. Yeah, it's yeah. like where we have to go to pay homage. It's like yeah, like we have to go pray. To yeah, when we went gods. through, yeah, we when we played in uh, Manhattan, we we're just like, okay, we gotta go hit, we gotta go through uh, Lodi and like you know pay respect. <laughs> did, so, you, so did, like, you did you come? Did you come through Lodi? No, I think we passed the the free. We saw like turn right for Lodi. Or <laughs> it's and like there like, yeah, yeah, we, we go straight. Go. <laughs> but, but like you said, logistics, we can't. Like yeah, we we see we've yeah, been around the world man. and we've seen well, none of it. None Elvis's of Elvis's yeah. house, that's it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so tell us, take us back to the beginning. Like, what was it? Because I'm sure you guys are just having fun, and that you never, none of you thought this would be where it's at today, and like how influential and everything it is. It's just like a bunch of a uh, bunch of guys just having fun, doing their thing. Uh, that's basically uh, what it was. I mean. You know, everybody wants to aspire, right? When you're a musician, you guys know, you guys play, you've played a long time together. Um, you know, th there's a reason why we do it, right? And and some people say, well, you do it because it's, uh, it's financially beneficial to you. Um, well, yeah, of course, it's, it's part of my job, right? It's part of my job, right? So you don't go to work unless it's financially you know, beneficial to you. Right. So, but you didn't start it, start out like that, but you had a dream and a vision. Right. And trust me, it's, it's come true over and over and the dream, the, the, the goal. Um, and you, and you, and it's something you have to fight for over and over. It doesn't just stay. And everybody's, uh, I don't care what band you are, you have slumps, right? You you take the roller coaster ride, and if you could stick it out long enough, you know you you start climbing back, and then it goes, you know, it's like that. But um, when we started, you know, we just it was just about playing music. It wasn't about you know what we. I don't know what really the expect expectations were at that time. You know, it was just a matter of put out a record and and go on the road. That's all it was. There's nothing more. It really wasn't. There's nothing more. So, you know. Um, it seems like that's the way it has to be for all the great bands. It's like you can't be like anything more than that seed of just, it has to come from that passion and the love. It's just like, it has to be authentic and real. Otherwise, it wouldn't, so many people wouldn't connect to it. Um, yeah, if you guys didn't love Halloween and love, <clears throat> like if you weren't authentically into this, it's like we wouldn't be connected to it because we'd be like, oh, those guys are fakes. So, so it's just like, it's just amazing. <laughs> Uh, I, I like to think so. I mean, I've always been into the horror stuff since I was a kid and, um, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but uh, look, and, and the fact that most of this came out of Lodi is actually pretty interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> so a lot of great stuff from New Jersey. Like I don't a, know why New Jersey is so great. Like really, it's, like, it's a really small place too, like a nice uh, residential type. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we, you know, but Lodi was interesting because Lodi had Lodi had a um, a lot of um, a lot of musicians in this town for you know since I was a kid uh, there was always lots and lots of musicians coming out of this town. So cool. here I found the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Taking you back, nice. Oh, nice, yeah. <laughs> but, I, mean, oh, I, I was yeah. actually fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice and big too. I think. Oh wait, that's a different front. one from one uh, I've seen. Oh man, nice. oh, oh, so there were two cool. shots. That's a, what, do you, what do you call it when like the, the, the zombie one. apocalypse happens? Like the strain. That's the first strain. <laughs> first strain. Or second strain actually. Yeah, oh, second strain. Yeah. So here's the picture that I took right before Tobias came in. All right. Oh, here's Glenn. That's really nice. There's Sean, Phil. <laughs> Love it. Um, but yeah, oh, yeah, so you know, uh, that's cool. But anyway, wow, that's awesome. That. Yeah, but more importantly, uh, all that. 
How do you pronounce it? Is it Sam Hain or oh, Sa Wayne? Yeah, yeah. Sa Wayne? Yeah, yeah. All right, from yeah. from the mother's mouth. From the mouth. <laughs> yeah. From well, the the, mouth. the 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 um the Latin pronunciation is Sawin. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. But how did you guys call it, say it? Sam Hain. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yes. There Whoa. you go. <laughs> yeah, we're okay. Hey, Sam Hain. Sam Hain. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, the. The Halloween thing, Sawin. But yeah, <laughs> Sam Hain, baby. Yeah, it sounds much more like dump truck, Sam Hain. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. Doom today. <laughs> dump truck, doom today. Right? <laughs> so I think um, so because of the internet, which is awesome, it has like so many like live bootlegs and stuff. Lots of porn. <laughs> that too. Um, hey. So I think the live Sam Hain recordings are far superior just for the energy wise than the actual recordings of uh the studio recordings i i, I don't know wait um, you're in sam hain <laughs> <laughs> no not never heard of him <laughs> uh you, you know I, I, uh, I think the um the sam hain recordings i can't tell you they were one of my favorites but it it captured it captured a, a moment of time yeah. uh and and you got to understand that you know, we did it in a studio in Lodi that I found um, when my uh, Morning Noise uh, had, after they got to, we got together as Morning Noise, my high school graduation gift from my mom was the recording and the pressing of the Morning Noise 45. <laughs> so oh, I actually, thank you, Mama. Yeah. So I, I, I opened this local music. <laughs> This, oh, I opened this local music mag and there was a there was this um, uh, little advertisement for the studio in Lodi. So I called it and I rode my bike to it and it was in the basement of this this guy's house. And then I turned um, I turned uh, Bobby Steele onto it first because we recorded an undead album there. And then Glenn, obviously, um, and you know that's where the the uh three sam hayne albums were done and the first um black area was done there i believe oh wow yeah. so but yeah it was in this guy's basement and uh he, <laughs> interesting thing i mean and it was like i never really liked the drums the, the guy didn't understand rock he he was a jazz musician he was a saxophone player oh. jazz musician we were his first rock band right morning oh. noise experimental right that's fast and so he wow. kind of you know he would get a sound but it, it, he was he was leaning more to the uh, uh you know it had to be tight sounding blah 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 and you know we were young we didn't you know I, I mean, I like I said, it captured a moment in time. You know, it was when did we start that? We started that early '83, uh, early '84. We started that album. So um, for 1984, right? Let's think back. What 37 years ago? Was what it was. I mean, <laughs> well, well, there's no, well, there's nothing wrong with it because what that's all we had at the beginning. But now, when I compare it to some live stuff, it's like, oh, okay, this is what it could be. But it's but yeah, like you said, that that time capsule, those songs, that time, mm -hmm. everything that you guys did, it was great for what it is. But just compared to like some of the live stuff, it's like, oh, it could have could have even been like this. But different but it's cool vibes, to hear, yeah, energy. yeah, it's cool to hear all the different ones that are that are coming out. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're yeah. But that that oh wow that's so great that he's trying to record it as a jazz thing uh that makes well not that but sense. but that's what he was used to His right background. so this yeah the sounds he was getting you know but an, an interesting thing is i was uh this is in the i'm trying to late probably late 80s early early 90s um I, somebody who knew lars calls me up it was like one o'clock in the morning. And Lars asked me, how did you get that kick sound on Initium? And I go, what? I know it sucks. I go, he goes, no, man, <laughs> I really like it. I'm like, really? That's, you know, so, you know, everybody has different tastes on, on yeah. what they like. Um, yes, he does. Uh, 
So that was so. for Death Magnetic, right? He he went for that those drums on uh, <laughs> <laughs> the snare. Yeah. Ding, ding. Well, I want to talk you about Nishio. Okay, go on. Yeah, go you on. know, I I own one of those Lars snare drums, and, and I can't use it because everything is ding, ding, ding. You know. Yeah, I'm just I'm exactly. just glad they're I'm just glad they just keep going. You know, I love Metallica. Just oh, hey, wow, wow. And, and look, you know they're what? Like a corporation. Well, they they are, but you know, if if you think about just think about music in general, right? Think about the people that have um, uh, are part of um, let's call it society. Uh, when you can turn on a radio station, what are you going to hear every day? You, you can almost name them. You'll hear Elton John. You'll hear Billy Joel. You'll hear probably Bruce Zeppelin. Springsteen, Zeppelin, Bon Jovi. <laughs> you know, but the, these are your mainstays, right? What happens as these people, like Prince, right? Prince and Bowie, as they die in Tom Petty, who replaces them? There is none. Well, uh, music, music is stuck in a moment, right? You, of course, you turn on the radio and you always hear. You'll always hear 80s music. Always. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. world it's is stuck. <laughs> well, but that but think about it. Some of those songs are almost 40 years old, but they get airplay like it was today, and like it was current. And that's because that music hit a certain nerve and nothing has replaced it, right? Because it became so electronic and um so um I want to say o- overproduced <laughs> that it doesn't strike the same nerve, right? It's like you get the instant gratification out of the new stuff and then it's gone. And then, you, then you move on to something else. All right. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. They're not creating uh fine five course meals or creating just uh candy that you just take. Well, the, it's, it's, it's like fast food, right? You eat it. Yeah. Feels good. Tastes good. You know, blah, blah, blah. And then it's gone and you shit it out and that's the end. Of it. <laughs> All right. All right. So but, it's just, Oh, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, but Arthur's it's not. Thinking. It doesn't. It doesn't leave a lasting impression. Like you don't Arthur. go. I got to go back to McDonald's to get that quarter pounder. <laughs> you know. If it wasn't so many MSG. So speaking <laughs> of lasting records and albums stuff like that. So the Sam or Son of Sam oh, album. Yeah. Oh yeah. That is another. Uh, Influential. Love it. Yes. It, it. Yeah. It's like you. It was another album that came out at the time that was just like. Uh, it's like another cornerstone. It's like the, another cornerstone it's just, it's of horror. Sam Hain plus Davey Havoc. <laughs> it was. It, what, what can you tell us about? I actually I don't know so, too much about about that album. Besides- so what happened was that was uh, that stemmed from the Sam Hain Danzig tour in '99, and on the second, the first half of the tour, Hate Breed opened up, and the second half, it was AFI. So we, you know, London knew Davey and and the other guys and. Well, you know, we got friendly with them on on the road. And at the end, it was like, um, hey, we should do a 45 and we'll ask Devil Man to put up the money so we can record and oh. put it out. Right. <laughs> so we're like, OK, so, you know, Todd starts sending, um, uh, you know, some demos out and stuff that was pre mp3 so we were doing it by cassette um so we're doing i do actually nice um so uh he sends it out and you know we're doing it and then davy spoke to uh brian holland who is dexter from the offspring and he he owned the label that that afi was on he's like well just do a whole album you know, we'll, we'll we'll give you a deal. So here we did a deal. Um, and before you know, we just had a record deal like like it was nothing. I flew, I you know after you know a few months of sending tapes back and forth. You know, I flew out to L.A. We never had a rehearsal. Um, myself, London, and Todd got together one night. Went in the studio the next day and or two. Recorded all the roughs. Davey came in the third day. Did the vocals. And you know, then there were some overdubs done. Glenn did some key stuff, and oh. it, it, it was it was it was mixed, and that was it. And it never, it was never. Yeah, you know, we were supposed. Thing? No, we never did a yeah. show. We were supposed to do a video, but what happened was, oh, yeah. this was um, kind of like 
Oh, you know, the arrest of AFI did not like Davey doing this. Uh, it was not, they, they were not in favor. They were not in favor, you know. So the video we were supposed to do got nixed. Um, in fact, he wasn't even allowed to do press for it. So the label had flown me out. They flew me out. I went out. I remember uh, I flew out April of 2001 to do to go into the uh, offices of the label that were in uh, California to sit there and do press for a week you know, on phones and stuff like that. So, you know, what are you going to do? Wow. It's funny. You it, the, um, uh, I was going to say that you said uh, Danzig's on the record. I remember when yeah. that al- album came out, there was a big <laughs> fucking sticker right on the front that said, <laughs> featuring Dan <laughs> fucking Danzig. I'm like, oh my God, it's like the Sam Hain reunion. Everything's perfect. And then you're like, where is he? I don't hear. And then you look in the liner notes. Danzig plays keyboards on this one song. What the fuck? <laughs> That's marketing, baby. <laughs> he did. He he did that as a favor for sure. No, yeah. it's all good. It's all it sounds good. <laughs> but if you guys were able to promote that and tour, oh man, that would have been like it. So, but it seems like if it's if by not doing it, it just makes it even more special. Where it's just like. Oh, the thing nugget. that could never be. It's just like, <laughs> oh, it's like, what if, what if? So we did a second album, obviously without Davey, without yeah. London. I should have never did the album. Um, oh, it's good. Nah, it, oh. Well, the singer was good. The singer's trying to go out as official son of Sam. And it's not cool because he shouldn't call it official. He had nothing to do with being official. Um and I like the guy, but you can't call something official where there's no official member in there that was in the original lineup. I did it. Um, London and I actually didn't talk for a while because I decided to do it. He didn't want to do it because we didn't have Davey. And I get it now. Um, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But um, so, yeah. So if you ever see there is an official Son of Sam show, it's not. None of us are in there. So <laughs> that, that reminds me. Um, uh, I'm starting a, a side project. It's called Kiss. Uh, we're just uh, not uh, you know, not original members, but you want to join? Yeah, yeah sure. I'll tell you this. Yeah. Although although it was didn't have Davey and a lot of the members, it was a great album. You did, I, I, you did put some great energy in there. I, I, I thought I thought we had, I thought there was actually some good songs in there. I yeah. I I like the album. I, it was very different from the first one. Yeah, but um, you know. If like I more said. like an anthology, like you know, like Tales from the Crypt, like this you need is another one version singer? of. We got a couple right here. Yeah, it's like Son of Sam, like this version, Son of Sam, this version. Oh, you know what it's like? Kind of like different. <gasps> what they wanted to do for Halloween three? Yeah, oh yeah, Halloween. It's a franchise, but it's just different singers, different. Uh, but same but thing. It's like what they. It's it's really like what they want to do with Kiss, right? Where Kiss becomes this entity of whoever behind the makeup right yeah, yeah. oh my god you're right oh, <laughs> a, a they did you know, changes <clears throat> look let's put it this way how do you know that when you go to a kiss show that's actually them <laughs> oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Um, it's like a stunt man up there it, yeah well oh uh, no the um the p- cover song people what are those people? yeah yeah, yeah that's the rumor sometimes that's like a fun little well but but in all seriousness you know there's a guy that works for the kiss organization and his name is Spiro is his first name. He he's been work, he was a big fan. Uh, he's tall like Gene Simmons, and he looks like Gene Simmons. And he's actually oh. Gene Simmons and him actually did a commercial one time. Um, and if you looked at them side by side, you couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> oh so imagine you know who knows conspiracy kiss conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, that reminds me like Ghost could totally do that. You oh know, right. Like, well, oh, yeah. well, that's why they're ghouls. Ah, you yeah, know, the they, nobody knows who they are. <laughs> <coughs> Biases of genius. Yeah. All right. So you had a picture. This okay. This actually hit home too because there was a picture of you and Danzig, and you said the caption was like friend, mentor, and bandmate. And uh, I was like, yeah, it's like you guys are friends. It's just like crazy. It's not just like yeah, this players coming in. Um, but so. Today, for us and the viewers, we want you to be our friend, mentor, and bandmate, and give us some advice. What, what's your advice for for all the young horror punkers out there? Everyone wants to get into the scene. What, what's your top uh, top advice for them? <laughs> <laughs> well, w- so, we didn't so. start out to be. We didn't start out to call ourselves a horror punk thing or anything or or, or whatever genre, right? I get. I guess that was just how it fell, and it morphed into 
something larger. Um, you know, there were already bands called the Batcave bands over in the UK, like Specimen, um, um, who else? Alien Sex Fiend, you know, Bauhaus. They were considered the, yeah. the, the real horror punk legends in a way, underground, dark, gothic music. Um, advice? You know, you got to be true to yourself. You know, I have a, I have a saying like um, uh, where it's like, uh, try stop. D don't be someone else because everyone else has been taken. Be yourself. Oh, everyone that. else has been that. taken. Because, you know, somebody will listen to like Black 29 and go, doesn't sound like Danzig. It's like, no shit. Really? <laughs> oh, wow. Note, it fucking rules. Yeah. Oh, thank you. But sweet nothing. But, listen to sweet nothing. <laughs> well, you know we have a new one come out in Cleopatra. Um, uh, hopefully by August or September. Um, and there's there's two. There's one cover on the album. Uh, there's actually two covers on the vinyl. There's one cover, and on the CD there will be two. And it's me and the singer from the band called the Sixty Nine Eyes from Finland. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yerky. And him and I did like a duet, a trade-off oh. on these two covers. <laughs> yes. Oh. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, then, you know, the one cover is uh, a kink song called Destroyer. Hmm. And the other the other song is uh, from a band called The Hollies called Long Cool Woman in a Black Dress. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The one that sounds like so. uh, Creedence Clearwater or whatever. <clears throat> right. what, do you, what is your... Um, frame of mind when picking songs to cover what were you thinking like yeah, i just really uh, love the song or well you know a lot of it will take me back to say you know i'm much older than you guys right so you know oh, my a couple years mm, <laughs> um i'll be 57 next month holy so <laughs> well happy birthday yeah don't not yet You're a vampire dude don't You're rush a vampire. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, that luxurious hair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah hair. Baby embryos in your hair. <laughs> yeah. He's got some good jeans. I yeah. can't pull it off. You know. You can see. But, <laughs> you can see his jeans. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, I pick songs that like hit a nerve with me, yeah. right? When I was like when I was a kid, and I was like, wow, that that's that's a pretty cool song, right? So, I, that, and again, that's what drives us, right? That's what. Why, why do people? you know, gravitate towards bands like the Misfits, right? And, uh, the original Misfits, because, well, <laughs> Love this, disclosure. Yeah, it's course. about, it's about the hook, right? Yeah. When you have a song and there's a hook, you will always gravitate back. I bet you're not a Bon Jovi fan, but I bet you can sing their choruses oh, yeah. of their songs, right? <laughs> Why is that? Because it's a hook and it yeah. caught you because they, they, the bigger the hook, the more fish. Right, Ooh. so Ooh, living yeah. out of prayer, baby. I love, I love uh, Bon Jovi. <laughs> well, I mean, regardless, but that, know, that's what I mean. Example. It's like you know, <laughs> you know, everybody will sing skulls, you know, uh, <laughs> and things, and the chorus to mother, right? Because it's a hook. It's it, you know, and it just, and you don't even have to be a fan of Danzig to know mother, right? Yeah. So it's just that hook that's cast, and it catches a lot of fish so we, so, we took that analogy. so we took that to the next level we put hooks but we just put woes in there so you don't even have to know the fucking words you just say whoa <laughs> <laughs> oh oh well, yeah <laughs> There's a lot of woes. Side note. Hey. Side, note. I, <laughs> a lot of woes. side note. I know radio people are listening. There are more songs other than Mother, and they're all great. Just play something else, please. And also continue to monitor. Like, yeah. I love hearing Danzig on the radio. It gives it just gives me like a hope for the world. Joy, you know? But then I think it's, well, there's other songs. There's a lot of other songs. You yeah. know, and unfortunately you can't play them all live because you only have a set amount of time. But uh, I'm looking forward to these, you know, shows. Hopefully, there'll be a run after Psycho Vegas. Uh, but you know, this is a this is a fucked up year because you have two years worth of bands trying to, you know, reschedule. <laughs> yes, it's all built up, dude. Battle Royale, and you know, <laughs> and again, right? It's all about logistics. Yep. So you need the, you know, the logistics to. You know, the, the you know, like you can't. You got to make sure that, say, if you were going to do the marquee, that they have the opening, right? You and and the other logistics is, 
you know, we're all, you're all, everyone's vying for the, you know, for the yeah. same almighty yeah. dollar, right? How much yeah. discretionary money do you have to spend at a show? And, and what show is that going to be, right? So if it was Danzig and say Ghost or whatever, where, where your audience falls into um, their crossovers, right? Let's call Black Label. You know, you're going to pick up, if all three of those bands were playing in a week, right? You only have X amount of money. Yeah. So who are you going to go spend it on? Right. So, and then there's the merch and all this stuff. So it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to take a few years for it to really settle down and figure itself out and, and write itself to where, you know, everybody can get back to somewhat um, being normal, whatever normal is. I don't know. For sure. So it's good to be in a legendary band because, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the strongest is going to survive. So any of the new new bands yep. are trying oh, to buy it, you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I think the, the only problem is with a lot of um, uh, mature bands is your age, right? Because you can't do it forever. And even Kiss knows that they can't do it forever because they just can't run around the stage at 72 years old. Now you can look at Mick Jagger and go, yeah, but it's a different type of, you know, Rock if we had to go out there and be like the Rolling Stones who kind of just stood there, you know, and, and look, <laughs> Mick Jagger for what's he 74 now, 75. Wow. I mean, well, you think about <laughs> rock is aging. And, and again, once these iconic bands start retiring or die off, you don't have anything to replace it. So it's, there's going to be a void in the world because again, you, you know, you, you start skimming from the top and then now you have all the bottom feeders, right? Who's, who's the next big thing. All right. So Think everyone listening, it. do you hear the call? Everyone listening, pick up the mantle, pick up those guitars. Now fill that void. We need hey, you. the world needs you. I, I've seen, I've Let's seen so many it. kids. I've seen kids from, you know, the, they have these school of rock things around the country and there are kids out there that not only can play their guitars, but perform the music. And that's there. There's a difference. There's a thing of playing your instrument, but now it's, you know, that's one thing, but you have to perform it as well. Yeah. And there's Look kids cool. out there. I'm, and I'm like, you are the future of, of music. And like, don't stop. I, there was a 15 year old girl that I saw like a year and a half ago out of these one of school of rock things. And this girl was amazing. Like it had, it was like, she was born with a guitar in her hand and it was uh, unbelievable to see, you know, that kind of talent coming from someone that young mm -hmm. so it, it's out there but those kids are going to turn into the next led zeppelin but we want <laughs> the next we want the next sam haynes so we want the kids who are just ADD that need something. So they just grab, they don't the know what they're doing. Kids. They just figure it out. The and then they, head. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that's blood what on we're waiting head. for. The true, the next geniuses are just do it out of like, they have no clue what they're doing. It's just out of love. They just, uh, and then, yeah. I, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. Led Zepp sucks. Uh, Sam Hain rules. <laughs> yes! Oh my God. Woo! Steve, new t shirt. You might get sued over, but. <laughs> uh, look, you know, every time I tell Johnny Kelly, I'm like, I don't like Led Zepp. He goes, Yeah, I, I, you don't know what you're talking about. I, it, it, Led Zeppelin just never did it for me. Actually, you know what's interesting? I listen to the music now, and you go, You know what? For the time that this came out, it was pretty far advanced far sounding. Yeah. John Bonham drum sounds and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. uh, again, it just didn't, it, it, it's like Johnny Kelly doesn't understand punk rock. Like it did it, that it's, you know, it was black Sabbath and Zeppelin that hit his nerve and punk rock oh, did yeah. it for me. Oh. Like, look, uh, you know, the damned are like one of my favorite bands. Oh yeah. And nice. I got to, when they opened up for the misfits back at Madison square garden, I got to sing Wait for the Blackout with their sound check. Oh. And did you get a video? I you did. Excuse? Hell yeah, you did. Hell yeah, All you right, did. Roll the tape. Let's go. <laughs> Try to find it. <laughs> Trying to find Oh wait, we, 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 do I have it? Oh, that's sweet. Oh, the blackout. Hey, you, and you got a good voice, so you're pretty good at it. Uh, let's see if I can Uh, hold on, let's see. That's fun. Let's see if I can 
Uh, Love the dam. What can you say about the dam, Bob? Uh, hi, Dave. <laughs> yeah, uh, cool. <laughs> You're cool. You're cool, guys. <laughs> now, the damned are always, you know, always one of my favorites because they, again, they they hit a nerve, the, you know, Dave Vanian's vocals and stuff. Oh, and, yeah. Um, yeah. You, you know, just, again, every different strokes. But for me, it was like, and, you know, their singer, Dave Vanian, doesn't really like to do uh, sound checks. So, you know, I'm in it. I'm standing in an empty Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and maybe there's 10 people, a bunch of texts, and then Captain Sensible goes, does anybody know Wait for the Blackout? I'm like, <laughs> this guy. I do. <laughs> get, that, get that homeless man out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if we can get this. Yeah. I got I got, well, I got to put it up because it, it's on the sideways. <laughs> this is the time and space. That was key and everything. That, that. Oh, it's weird because, you know, they, they use all in your monitor. So I'm standing on stage and there's no wedges oh. on stage. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like trying to hear what's coming out to an empty an arena. And it was kind of weird, but it was a dream come true. That's awesome. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's a moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was good. Damn. Yeah, it was good. Or Tales from the Road. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Tale from, <laughs> I want to hear a tale right from the horse's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the the initium cover. I know there's a mm -hmm. story there. Uh, uh, can you tell us how it came to be? Because we were extremely influenced by that as well. The blood all over, contest. <laughs> all that stuff. We have a song called um, "Demon Spitter," and I was like, you know what? I want to make this music video in, like an homage. an homage to you guys. Initium. What what would Sam Hain do if you had a music video? And so there's a bunch of fire and blood and all this. It's fast song. Primal. So yeah, do you, like, is there a story there that you could tell uh, us? You know, Glenn's idea, obviously. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it was interesting the day we did that. Um, you know, I, re I just remember it was very messy. <laughs> very very messy oh yes i'm always covered with blood anyway so i get yeah. sticky. sticky and you know. all the blood everywhere on the floor so is it true there's a rumor out there that was horse's blood mm -hmm. <laughs> is it really <laughs> no it <laughs> was <laughs> oh shit <laughs> yeah you guys are vampires dude okay yeah. would you, you get the yeah butcher's shop you like yeah hey, the, oh the yeah. Was, butcher shop yeah the horse shop there 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 is a there is a <laughs> There was a slaughterhouse, so went and got it. Slaughterhouse, yeah. Slaughterhouse, slaughterhouse. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, get her. Yeah. Go to the slaughterhouse. Cycle. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I don't know. What's he doing? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Look up. De yeah, let's get your reaction. Demon spitter, Calabrese. I have a question. Demon spitter, Calabrese. Yeah. Why are you searching that? Steve, what is your favorite Sam Hain song? Like that, you, just one of your personal favorites. Yeah. There's, um, if a uh, young, up and coming, uh, attractive band of brothers from Arizona <laughs> were to cover a song of Sam Hain, who do you think is the best fit? All yeah, murder. you know. What's your uh, favorite? I, I always like All Murder, but I, I, yeah. I really love, I really love the song Sam Hain. You yeah. know, oh, it, God, yeah. it, it's, it, you know, but Black Dream was always a favorite okay. one of mine. That's classic. Um, Mother Mercy's you know. Killer. Oh, yeah. Mother Mercy is a great song. And um, November Coming Fire Ooh. is, yeah. you know, yeah. is. <laughs> I love those words. November Coming Fire. So good. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being. We're doing it. When, like, you know, being a, a snot nosed kid going to shows in Chicago. 
go and see Danzig and p- people would have the um, Sam Hain, uh, you know, just drawn on the back of their leather jackets. I was like, oh my God, this is so scary. These people, oh my <laughs> God. Scary, <dude. laughs> it was the scariest show ever going there. It was just like, fuck. Being a, a Catholic, uh, you know, school kid, just like entering the den of now, Satan. like, oh. Now, are you, are you, are you guys, what's your, what's your nationality? Guess, oh, guess. Hey, guess. what's up? Well, our last what name I, is Calabrese. Uh, well, that, that's what I figured. Well, what the hell is a, a bunch of Italians doing in Arizona? <laughs> we moved from Chicago to. Down, it's part of the program. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. The bull. Sammy the Bull. Sammy the Bull said you well, wouldn't say nothing. Answer, hey. I'll give you a real answer. Our, our dad is a family man, and he got a really nice job out here. We used to live in Chicago. What and, a boring answer. Well, your dad got, our yeah. dad got a nice job, and then we... Visited. No, here's the real answer. We, <laughs> know mobsters, where, okay? we know where the bodies are buried, so they moved us <laughs> to Arizona. I get it. I get it. What do you want to yeah. I'm trying to think. Oh, I'm looking for my, my artwork here on the wall to say... Oh, uh, shit. Oh, uh, oh. Yeah. Multimedia. Dude, hey, like, that's a bootleg. This is great. <laughs> No, it's not. I could. <laughs> Whoa! What is that? That orange thing. Orange can... thing. This. It's like a uh, to the left. To the left. Right there. That thing. Or what? To the left. That's the same hand thing right there. Is that oh, like is a, this a wall like, piece? It looks like a clock or something. There's a clock. Oh, clock. that. Yeah. 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 yeah I, you know what? Somebody gave it. Gave this to me. It's a clock. Oh it is yeah. A clock. Nice. Oh, yeah. Then, uh, go right. Go right to, and then go. Uh, you're right. Now go down. All the VHS tapes. Now go straight to the These? to the record. No, to the right. <laughs> no, this is no. You're this right. This is uh, <laughs> Wait, Sam Hain. Sam Hain, the Roxy, 1985. Oh, oh shit. I got that on DVD. Um, <laughs> to the album cover of your uh, Sam Hain to the right. That not to the one uh, to the right of that. That one. What did your mom think of Unholy Passion? <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck <laughs> yeah, dude. She loves it. Tape. <laughs> hey, Ma, can you, can I, love, you... <laughs> yeah, I love that artwork and I've always wanted to get a tattoo of that but Whoa. mommy wouldn't approve <laughs> Whoa, breaking news that be so cool, that Bobby, Bobby doesn't have any tattoos so that's, oh, that's this? nice So these um, Glenn and I made these and these have a piece of leather in the back and they would go on the strap of your leather jacket on the sides oh, oh shit <laughs> why don't you wear those Fuck, road Sorry, warrior bro. damn because I, I can't fit in the leather jacket <laughs> <laughs> but we have a danzig lunchbox oh nice you fit all your horse all that stuff there. this is great <laughs> and what else do we have dude oh um, thank you for this tour this is amazing yeah did not expect this holy oh, cow oh yeah nice look at you guys Fuck. Poor babies. <laughs> oh, so legendary. It's just like you guys are just goofing around taking photos and you don't realize now people are, are your worship. Then, <laughs> well, yeah. that's Glenn one of those bo- things. Foresight. Glenn bought me this bat as a housewarming gift. Oh, oh nice. Damn. Yeah. Just don't eat it. <laughs> just don't eat it. Looks like jerky. <laughs> hey. Yeah. So well, we, we have all kinds of Fun things oh, around shit. here. The memorabilia. Damn. Dude, great um, place to get a leather jacket if you want another leather jacket. I know you already have one. Straight to hell apparel. Not sponsored, but they could sponsor us. Straight but, to hell. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, we're all wearing it. Well, Jimmy's not wearing it, but. I'm a big fan of Ike and Tina Turner, right? And this is a box oh, wow. set. And and um, Glenn bought one on the road, and then he sent me one. Nice. Merry Christmas! Oh, yeah. oh my nice. God, from GD, your, your boy, <laughs> Big D. Love that. <laughs> Crazy so, man, nuts. Well, we have a lot of fun stuff in this basement here. We have a stripper pole. Gotta have a stripper <laughs> pole. <laughs> of course, come on. All right. Oh shit. And then if that stripper we pole open, can talk. <laughs> we open this. Help me! Help me! Help Whoa! Me. There we got is. masters. Oh, oh my God. Some Box sets. Oh, oh. <laughs> that right. is great. That's an eBay wet dream. That, that, yeah, that's a well, that's a coffee book wet dream. That's a all sorts of wet dreams. Oh yeah, you could put all that. To, oh wow, you yeah, got so just much hire source some material. There's a bunch of different Elvis sings Elvis, Danzig sings Elvis stuff. <laughs> Elvis sings Danzig. Elvis sings Elvis. Elvis sings Danzig. This stuff, 
This needs to be in the, a museum somewhere. Ooh, like the, uh, the there's National all kinds of. There's got to be more. There's, there's be Sam Hain master tapes down here. There's all kinds of stuff. This has got to be in like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, I don't know why it's not. Yeah. It's just it's in yeah. your basement. Hey, we're, it's this in the basement. <laughs> as long as uh. Well, what better guy than you? <laughs> think of all the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's, all that bullshit with Led Zepp. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Am I right? <laughs> All those yeah. hard rock cafes and the yeah. stupid. This is this is the drum tracking room. Ooh, yeah. so, all right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is. Is this where, where you yeah. recorded "Sweet Nothing"? No, that was in my uh, condo. Um, I bought this house. Um, it was December 2019. So, um, you know. Oh, congrats yeah. on the nice house you got. Yeah, you got that stripper nice pole in right away. That's, that's good. <laughs> Well, this is this is the basement, That's and um, I own a yeah. basement. Yeah, you don't have basements here. No, 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 this is the control room. Up. <laughs> Damn, trick or treat <laughs> studios. Yeah, this is the control room. All right, so if we could come record at uh, Trick or Treat Studios, you'll let us rummage through all your stuff and like take a look of what you got. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> at uh, um, Trick or Treat, do you smell my feet or do you give me something good to eat? I'm just wondering. Only something good to eat because I Thank cook you, too. So. Thank you, Mr. Zing. Oh, you cook. You, have, you, oh, you make a Papa good... Papa Zing. Right. Papa Zing, yeah, makes a good Italian... Uh, absolutely, uh, actually, I do. Oh. Actually, I do. That goddamn giant skeleton from Home Depot. Oh, you got one of those before they all went. <laughs> oh, you're sorry. So you have one, and I want it. Can I have it? <laughs> so uh, that was that was in my um, uh, it's it's in my attic right now, uh, but um, I I really wanted it, and I was like, you know, I'm not a frivolous spender of money, and it was three hundred bucks. My wife's like, just Whoa, get well, it. You want it. So I'm like, so now they're all sold out. So I convinced the store manager to sell it to me for 40% off because I'm like, it's, I'm like, you're out of them. And this is a display model. So I know that you guys, I know how chain stores work. You don't pay for the display model. So give it to me. So he gave it to me for 40% off. It took one, uh, two guys in one of those, you know, they, they have those rolling steps to get stuff on the, the shelves on way on top. So they had it, you know, take it down piece by piece. And, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's where you, the, your Jersey comes out. You're like, all right, uh, we're making a deal. You're giving that to me. <laughs> try discount. I, that's Zing exactly it. Sing once. <laughs> the first time I saw it, Jim posted uh, some pictures on his Facebook and he's like, dear yeah. diary, love it first sight. And then I'm like, Oh, that's pretty cool. And then, um, then I saw that you had it in your front right yard. And I was like, he got one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sells out like that. You didn't realize they put it up and then they all sold out. Well, you know, and I also dressed it up for Christmas. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I, I put like, a, well, I found a Santa Claus outfit and the pants fit it like it, they were shorts, right? And uh, oh, I put yeah. a candy cane in its <laughs> in its hand and and stuff. Um, you know, it'll come out back out soon. Oh. Well, thank you so much for that tour. That was unexpected. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. so, you're such a, a giving person. Thank you so much. I, so since this is the Mystic Cult, Cult of, of Horrors, Horrors Calibri's podcast, spooky. we're going to get a little spooky here, Steve. We're going to get some spookiness. Do mm-hmm. you, Steve motherfucking Zing, have a ghost story? Oh. And if so, is it spicy? I do. Throw Dude. something he does. Oh, oh, he does. No, right at so, it. Uh, when... When I was um, married to my ex-wife, uh, I used to, uh, we, we lived there for a short time after we got married. And I would, for, for some reason, like, I'd go to sleep and, like, I would get this feeling that I was being held down and choked and I could not get up, all right? And I, I couldn't, I couldn't, like, I couldn't say anything, right? And all of a sudden, I start going, "Our Father who art in heaven, help!" And all of a sudden, it would stop. So I would, I would never say anything. So my brother-in-law was in college, and you know, he'd come home for holidays or whatever, and he was getting ready to leave to go back to school. And I go, "I guess it sucks that you have to go back to school." He goes, "No, man." He goes, "I can't wait to go back." I said, "Why?" He goes, "I can't wait to get really good sleep." I go, "Why? You have a problem sleeping?" He goes, "Dude," he goes, "Sometimes I feel like I'm being choked and I can't get up." Right. Oh, my God. Oh. Comes to find out. We, we come oh. to find out that the people that had owned the house previous 
we um, that be, before my in-laws bought it, the woman hung herself in that bedroom. Oh. It was just weird. It was like, I, 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 oh, I that could, makes sense. It was oh, it, that was mm-hmm. you know that was that was pretty fucked up. Ooh. Oh, that is oh, that's up. awesome. Yeah, with the uh, collaborating evidence with your brother who had the same experience, yeah. who didn't even know there was this. That's what oh, they exactly. say when you die in a crazy horrific way. Yeah. You know, it just kind of repeats itself. So, what do you think that is? Yeah, I think it's like a loop in there, or was she trying to get your attention to like help, like bring in the I don't know. Help. I don't know, <laughs> but I, didn't, I never future. wanted to sleep there again because it was it was very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, bre- not breathing is uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit. <laughs> Just a bit. So, and what's going on with calories? Uh, oh, talk about well, that. thank you. Well, well finally. Uh, well, that's all the time we have. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I'll have the floor and you guys can. All right. Go oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, all right. We have, a, we have a brand new. Oh, if I had, ever, we have a brand new album called Flee the Light. How brand new is it? It just it's came out. Dark. Oh, <laughs> it's fresh. Hey, nice. right, we're working on it. We're going to be working, working on, on a new one, Stevie Baby. Yeah. Um, so it's called Fleet of Light, 11 tracks, 11 music videos. Whoa. Music videos are so important. Um, yeah. So 11 music 11. videos. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Um, the philosophy here was I saw this uh, interview with Rob Zombie, and he was talking about how, like, he made. A uh, shit ton of music videos for when he did the solo thing from White Zombie to Rob Zombie. And every single song he made a music video for, that's what people sing. So I'm like, hmm. Yeah. All right. I guess let's, we, we've noticed that too. Yeah. Like the, the songs that we have, the, the music videos. Yeah. For, yeah. Voices yeah. of the Dead. Everyone loves that one because it has a music video. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kids today, huh? Yay. So yeah, that's cool. Our, uh, <laughs> did we talk about TikTok? I don't think so. Did we talk about uh, merch? We got tons of merch. We're always about. <laughs> so we write, we write songs so we can sell merchandise, Steve. That's hey. how we do it. <laughs> Whatever works. So we got pen, we got pins, we got we got shirts, we got uh, uh, I don't know what what else we got. We got, uh, got it all. We got, got it all. What, what do you need? We'll go to the store. What yeah. do you want? We'll hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, enough about us because this is this is the this is about Steve you. Zing hour. All right, so we're rounding out the end of the uh, the pod. Where can people find Steve Zing? Like, uh, where can they follow you? Give them give you their money, um, stuff like that. Well, Instagram, obviously, right? Steve Zing, Sam Hain, Instagram, <clears throat> uh, Facebook. But I get Facebook. Um, I get only allows you five thousand people or something, and then yeah. caps off whatever. But um, black twenty nine dot com, B L A K two uh, nine. Again, we have a um, there's a morning noise album uh, from stuff from 40 years ago that's yeah uh the cd was just released and i know the vinyl's coming out soon that's on cleopatra and black 29 will be out in hopefully late summer or september depending on the um how fast they can get vinyl made because there's a backlog of there's only a handful of you know people who make vinyl so um you know i'm looking forward to that and um you know, that's about it. That's it. Hell yeah. yeah oh, so- well, speaking of vinyl and Cleopatra and all that stuff. All right. Dying question. Sam Hain, vinyl, question mark? Like, do you, I don't know if you have full say, but like Best people of, are dying. Like, also, uh, reissues. Spotify. Did that, that's the basic. All right. Thing. So, uh, so the, the only thing I could tell you is, you know, yeah. I had dinner with Glenn last week when I was in L.A. Um, and... Um, we talked about it there there's it's a very complicated situation yeah because of other other people involved um so i we're hoping to get it resolved and someday put something out trust me um yeah you know it doesn't benefit myself or glenn not to have it out there but there's there's again it's complicated it's complicated. <laughs> That's all you need That's to all say. I can say. Oh. You know, yeah, I, I know you see it like on the Danzig Seventh House, like the, the massive, just like, <laughs> oh, we've been talking about it for like, over an hour. It's just like, <laughs> love it. And you yeah. are it. You need, and we need more of there it. There was, oh, maybe, all right. Have you seen it? was uh, April's Fool, April Fool's Day. I think it was Nuclear Blast put out like a, it, it was like a, 
a, uh, an envisionment of all the Samhain in different colors. And they're like, no, it's real. dude, they look great. Really? <laughs> I got to show you. I'll just screen. I'll show you the screen grab. It's awesome. Like cool. those, like the possibility. Yeah. But right. um, oh, yeah. OK, so you are a busy man and we have a partying gift for you. OK. Oh. <laughs> a piece right. of the iconic Calabrese okay. collection. Yeah, there yeah. is five different options, wow. tie-dye, baseball, etc. This is for you for free, but everybody else, calabresestore.com, uh, pay up. But, yeah, Steve, I'll get your information <laughs> later. And yes, get that that, I, over. I, I would appreciate it. I, I would wear it. Thank you. Yeah, dude. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> okay, so what, where are we? Uh, where are this we? is episode 23 with Steve's <laughs> With Steve Zing. Oh, wait. Thank Steve, you. Oh, it's Steve oh, yeah. fucking Zing. Steve Thank you. Fucking Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, say it Thank right. For, <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you, Steve. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. yeah th Guys, thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope uh, we'll get back to the marquee soon so we can hang out. And, oh, hell yeah. I'll do the sound know. check. I'll see the sound <laughs> check for you. <laughs> perfect uh, i hope you guys are doing good you guys playing soon well, our booking agent is trying to get us to, to book some shows and we're like the same thing you're thinking this is going to be like uh, a battle royale like everyone's going to be playing yeah. at the same time so it's like we're going to wait till it cools right down because we don't want to like you know battle against everyone else for those dollars because because like yeah. if it was between us and sam hayne they're going to be going to see sam hayne so we're like <laughs> it's always maybe not i don't know and that always happens like we'd be playing california and like you know you guys would be playing like some festivals like oh did you know danzig's gonna be playing that same weekend we played in mexico and rob like, zombie <laughs> our first time in mexico and rob zombie had a just having a festival down the street yeah god damn it <laughs> so we're like okay forget it we're not gonna do any of that prop we're gonna wait till the dust settles wait a little bit then... yeah <laughs> i i understand yeah. completely well i hope you guys do and uh you know hopefully you, you got you'll get back to the east coast sometime oh yeah it's uh it's all but I, I don't know why you guys don't try to get on like if danzig comes to, to arizona why you guys don't try to get on as one of the openers well steve since we have direct line right now <laughs> we would love to we would, any danzig show we would love to i mean always uh, if i hear of something i know we're trying to like i said i don't know it's a shot in the dark but if by some chance i'll see what i can do Thank you. Yeah, because sometimes I know the promoters will have someone in mind already, or you know, if you guys suggest, you know, just put it out there <laughs> from like, the big man himself. Yeah, I want well, Calabrese. <laughs> if they say, yeah, you have any openers in mind, and be like, just throw throw a name out there and see what happens. We appreciate, we appreciate we that. Pre yeah, absolutely. You got it. I got it. Well, guys, I thank you so much. I really appreciate everything, and I uh, hope to talk to you guys soon. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Stay so safe much. out there. Bye. Uh, you too. Bye. 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 Bye.